For those of you who do not know Johnny Jewell, she's a two times President's Cup winner. Uh, she's got 8,500 competitive miles with NATRC under her belt. She's pulled thousands and thousands and thousands of miles. Um, I don't know if she's gone coast to coast yet, but I know she's been up the East Coast in Texas and the middle latitories and through the Rocky Mountains. Um, so she's been all over the country. Uh, so she's been there, done that with the horse trailer. All right, I am going to uh, let the video start to play. So you have all this stuff and you got to figure out how to put it places that you can get to it easily, find what you need and try to remember exactly where it is. If you go to your local um, Lowe's, Home Depot, big box store, you can find the different storage rails. I like the ones that are made out of fiberglass, like these three, where you can drill the holes through into your wall wherever you'd like it. Um, some come in longer lengths. These happen to be 36 and 32 inch, and you can cut to fit whatever size you want. Each system has their own variety of hooks, baskets, hangers, most of the systems are very simple. The hook goes up into the rail and then clicks into place. I always suggest people buy a horse trailer with one slot more than the number of horses they think they will carry. So this is my front stall. It's basically an empty slate. Then I added some gladiator closet rails. Then pick up the different hooks, whatever you think you need. Gladiator, they slide up, click in. Hooks up, and I have things hanging. Gladiator basket, not above the horses, but in the front stall. Lightweight items in it. hanging basket, hose accessories, tent stakes, odds and ends. You could put tools in it. Easy to grab. To me, tack rooms never have enough room to store everything that I carry. My door has one of the mesh things to hold off my brushes, that sort of thing. The blanket bar I used to hang lightweight things on. I added stick-on carpet squares inside the walls of the tack room so that things wouldn't make noise, rattle, and rub. It only came with a few places to hang tack. Then I always need more hooks. So I added some of my gladiator track up here. It's removable hooks, or I can change the type. Then some normal little coat hooks here and there to hang lightweight items. Made a quick paper towel holder. I also added a two drawer filing cabinet for odds and 
ends. And I carry two spares for my horse trailer. So the second one rides underneath the saddle racks. Just inside the horse compartment, I added a short gladiator rail with some hooks so I can hang a couple extra lead ropes if I ever needed to grab them in a hurry. Patio mats can often be difficult to store somewhere and cumbersome, so I rolled mine up, added some straps inside the stud divider, and I hang the mat up high. I also have installed some rings that are flush that I can tie into carry a spare tire not on the wheel and it's strapped up on the wheel well. Plastic lattice down on the floor under the hay to keep urine from leaking into the hay. Upright jumbo laundry bags for my hay when I want a flake, open it up, peel a flake off. If you have manger storage, you can add some extra hooks. Here's just a Velcro loop that I screwed on. I've added an extra pocket holder for electrolytes and such. Inside the door, another pocket holder. Here you can see I added a rail for my folding chairs. My generator travels in the front stall and I always keep my trailer changing Jiffy Jack trailer aid where it's easy to grab quickly. I wanna get that tire changed and on the road again. The inside of the door, it also has a rail system and this is where I hang my saddle rack. Before I added the rail, I tied it up onto the window Apple picker and broom hang just inside the door. I use Vittle Vaults for my feed storage, but you can also buy gamma lids, which can go on standard five gallon bucket. I use lath screws as the head is flat and these particular screws are self-drilling but I do drill a pre-hole slightly smaller in the wall to make it easier to drill into the support beam. To get over that fear of drilling a hole in your horse trailer for the first time you might want to try just a simple J-hook installation. Place it where you would want it to go. Take a marker or pencil, draw a spot. Then you would take a tap or you can use a large nail to make a little dent. Then drill a hole with the drill bit that was slightly smaller than the screw you're going to use. Then install your screw. Then you would repeat the process for the second screw. And after that's done, it's ready to use. If you're installing one of the rails, you would measure the space you want the rail in. 
And then in my case, I have an aluminum trailer with a steel frame. Take a magnet and you can run it along the body of the trailer or the walls and check if you have a steel frame or not. They usually will line up where the rivets are. That's where you would install screws for the best support. If you have an aluminum trailer and aluminum frame, it can be a little trickier finding the supports. But if you tap, you can hear the sound difference. And again, look for existing rivets or screws that usually do line up with support beams. To get the right size screw, you would measure your rail in the area the screws will go through into the wall. And then I add approximately three quarters of an inch and that's what I buy. So I've marked on the wall where the support beam is and my first screws will go in through the rail and into the support beams. This part is easier if you have a second set of hands. One to hold the rail, the other drills the hole through the rail into the wall, then without moving the rail, installs the screw. When working alone, I have been able to just tape the rail up to the wall with some heavy duty tape and do this by myself. So this particular rail does have a screw in at the supports, but others that are just through the wall. I've also installed bucket holders on my trailers. This is also an important point to have them mounted through a beam on an aluminum trailer. Some of the heavy steel trailers I've just mounted through the skin. Because these are going all the way through the frame to the inside of the trailer for support, I use bolts with a nut instead of screws. The hole was drilled all the way through then I add a washer backing and an acorn nut that if the horse were to bump it, it's smooth and they would not get injured. I have also installed all of my own high ties myself. This is very, very important to go through the beam in the trailer, not just the skin. So if you're having them professionally installed, be sure they do that. This high tie mounts and comes into the tack room. So the nuts on the ends of the bolts do not need covered. The ones that are inside the horse compartment, I chose to cover with little rubber door stops just in case the horse somehow flung his head or something else and smacked himself, the nut would not injure him. Often at rides, I will run a high line from the horse trailer to a tree instead of using the high tie. Here, I took a very large eye ring bolt and replaced the bolt that came with the high tie and I just snap or tie into that and then run it to the tree. On this trailer, I took some fold down rings that go practically flush, measured the distance for the particular hay bag I like and installed them. On this trailer, I added 
an additional tie ring, then I hang the hay bag with these Velcro straps that you can pick up at Lowe's, Home Depot, etc. They Velcro on, and then they just snap into the rings. Make sure to always have the snap facing away from the horse so he does not rub and get his halter caught. Here I took a simple blanket bar, installed it in the ceiling of the tack area, then attached a normal tack hook for extra places to hang, tack, helmets, etc. And I can toss saddle pads up over the blanket bar. And last, I picked up some of the plastic tack hooks that are flexible. Velcro to the bar on my window. And when I'm done riding, I can hang the bridle up as I put my horse away. All right, that was the end of the video that I had. <laughs> if people have questions to ask now um, while they have you, um, we'll, t we'll take care of that. Okay. Um, yeah, Kristen Johansson, she initially asked, uh, um, she, she got a little ahead of you. Um, how did you know, uh, how do you know where it's safe to screw into the wall of your trailer? Um, I thought you went into pretty, that in pretty good detail about finding the ribs, um, the, uh, uh, the steel frame or even the aluminum frame. You kind of follow rivet, rivets or use a magnet if you have a steel frame. Um, I did have one other comment. If you have, as noticing, like with a spring tie, um, on my trailer, it's all aluminum, but it's a steel plate. And I'll usually put a thin piece of plastic or something between the steel and the aluminum just to prevent any um, chemical reactions between the different different types of steel to Good avoid point. rust and such. Um, let's see. Um, we have lots of people online. Um, uh, uh, go to the question and answer uh, icon on on Zoom and type in any questions if you have questions. Well, there we okay. go. Um, Kimberly Murphy commented, uh, the high tie comes with the rubber backing to prevent the reaction. Um, I didn't know, it's, I use a spring tie, which is a little different, but that's a very good feature. Don't forget to use it. Um, uh, Mary Kay, at the end of the video, there was a nice bag hanging that you might have had towels or something in. Where did you get that bag? I'm not sure what bag, it didn't show my um hay bag on the outside the video cut off on my end oh there it is yes yeah, so that's a gladiator bag um go to uh i think lowe's carries the gladiator systems and they have the bags but there's other systems that also have uh baskets that you can put up I'm working through the questions um brand um brand asked brand asked what is the um what is the name of the system again? Uh, that was the Gladiator system you said? Yes. And there's also um, two other systems that Lowe's had, and I believe Home Depot also carries some, but you can find them also on um, Amazon. And they're usually called mm, garage storage. If you type in garage storage, you'll come up with the rail systems. Yeah, I, I've used something similar by Rubbermaid, um, yes. a similar track system. Um, I don't know who has the better attachments or if they're all pretty much the same. They seem the same now. I had uh, some used to be metal tracks and you were limited as to where you could drill your screws through because they had kind of preset holes. Um, all of the fiberglass ones are what I saw now. So you can put the holes where you need them to attach to support beams and also much easier to cut. Okay. Um, Chrissy right. Knight has a question. Uh, where can the sticky back carpet squares be purchased? That's a brilliant idea. I believe I got mine at Walmart. Now they've started, they got a little hot and mine had started to um, come loose in a few areas. 
So I'm going to go back and add a little bit of glue on them so that they stay up. Uh, and see. I have not rinsed them, um, but you could. I've done, um, I don't wash the inside of my tack room too much. I'm lucky to get the floor done. But the, the adhesiveness of the ones I have probably would not hold up to rinsing. Um, and then uh, Danielle uh, 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 Dorn Dornuward uh, had a related question. How do you attach the carpet squares? Can you rinse them off without damaging the adhesives? Yeah, and, and they're peel and stick. So a few, area, few of them I did have to cut to size. Um, and, and again, related question. Uh, carpet on the wall, any additional glue needed or this uh, peel and stick worked by itself? Yeah, some of them, they are kind of melting off. So um, I'm gonna try a little hot glue on mine, see if that'll help. Uh, Kimberly Murphy uh, asked, what is the lid you used on the five gallon buckets? Gamma lids. And that's that uh, screw on lid. Um, uh -huh. It'll come okay. with the lid and part that will pop onto the five gallon bucket for the lid to screw into. Okay. Uh, Christian Johansson, I've seen grids that get put up to allow hanging things in various ways, as opposed to mounting separate hooks like shown here. Any thoughts about if that is an advantage? I've not really looked at them um, because I was, I guess you, if you could cut to the space that you had, they pr could work very well, but I've not really looked into them. Uh, next question from Donna Curry. Uh, do command hooks uh, uh, not hold up? I'm guessing those I are the have, 3M. Yes, I've never tried them. They um, don't look like they would hold up for me. I, I've used them in the interior of our living quarter to hang jackets and things, and they've been very good for that. And um, and you could probably, it's, we've had several pounds hanging from them. Um, I wouldn't hang a saddle from them, but it's, uh, I think for like jackets and, and halters, my guess is they probably work just fine. Very good. Uh, uh, from Fran Munch, where do you store the emergency knife? I have a ring inside the horse compartment, just inside the door where I have a knife. I have a ring inside the uh, escape door, just inside where I hang a knife and one in the tack room. I will say you can for also, You can also um, put them up with some tape, like masking tape, if they're an emergency knife, that you would just grab it and rip the tape and um, take the knife to cut whatever you need in an emergency. But as we all know, we should have them on our person at all times. Yeah, right. And I will say from personal experience, knowing where your knife is, is very important. Uh, you can, you, when you need it, you need it now. Yes. Uh, Nancy Mueller, how do you cut those gladiator tracks into different lengths? I just used a hacksaw or a miter saw. Um, if you've got a reciprocating power saw, that works too. But I just cut them by hand because they're fiberglass, they're pretty easy to cut. Yeah, it's um for like the rubber main that are aluminum. I it's aluminum's pretty soft, and if you have a chop saw, you can use those. Just go yes. very go slowly. Uh, it's a soft enough metal. If you have a, de a decent carbide blade, it'll cut right through it. Uh, Fran Munch, love the idea of the latest work for your hay bags. Absolutely, getting stuff off the ground is a great idea. Uh, Donna Curry, have you put any extra cushion on the floor? I have. I got, I should have shown those, um, the linked together plastic mats or rubber mats. I got mine at Harbor Freight and they're for like workout mats, but they come in uh, like three by three squares. I put those down on top of my aluminum floor and then I put my regular rubber mats back on top. I also sprinkle uh, baking soda down first so that if urine does leak through, <clears throat> it um, helps keep the floor from corroding. And then on my 
mats that came with the trailer, I use Gorilla Tape and I tape the seams so that urine doesn't leak through. Do you, pull your, do you pull your ever pull your mats to wash it wash out underneath or yes just... um at least once a season and then i wash everything i pull everything out and power wash okay uh, uh laura hardesty would you repeat uh what you said about the plastic latest lattice on the floor so i cut it to the shape of my corner where my hay is stored and it's actually two thicknesses. I bought one large piece of the plastic lattice. You could use the wood lattice too, but it might not um, hold up as well. And I cut it to where my hay sits. I didn't need it in the whole stud wall, stud floor area. And that um, if urine leaks that direction, then it doesn't um, get to the hay. It gives a little bit of an air buffer in between the hay or the hay bag and the floor. Yeah, I've personally used, uh, made little wood lattices using like uh, one by twos and you mm -hmm. just tack them together with a, um, a little nail gun and that gets yep. the hay off the ground. Works real real well since you don't move it very often. Um, it doesn't have to be that well put together um, and it works very well. All right. Uh, Kim Murphy, uh, Murphy uh, is commenting that adhe adhesives degrade. Uh, I yes. imagine this is with the carpet squares and so you probably do have to get the contact cement back in there occasionally. Um, uh, Mary Kay, uh, did I miss this? Where do you store water for your horses when primitive camping? Um, I have two 35 gallon tanks in the back of the truck instead of in the trailer. Um, the trailer has its living quarters water, which I use just for myself. Um, I went with two separate tanks instead of one large one so that when I forget and I leave it running while talking to friends in camp, I only lose 35 gallons and not all 70. An experience we all know too well. Um, yes. our, our rule is you never walk away from running water, um, <laughs> but we still do. We all do. <laughs> Uh, Lynn Ward asks, command hooks can be a problem if in very, uh, comments that command hooks can be a problem in very warm climates. Okay. Well, um, that's, that was my feeling, which I had not tried them yet here in Texas. And I think, uh, uh, Kim Murphy had a similar comment, uh, for the, uh, command for the command items. Um, I think we've gone through the, the list of questions. Um, uh, here's come some more questions. Uh, Nancy Mueller, uh, do you store horse blankets uh, or coolers in uh, in the below the manger storage area? My manger storage is just for my feed and my tubs and my buckets. I have a duffel bag that I put the horse's um, wardrobe in, and I will either toss it on top of that extra spare that's in my tack room, or if I'm only taking one horse, I have a space in the manger in the stall that has no horse in it that I will toss it up in there. Um, I'll, I'll comment that for blankets, my wife and I, we put the blankets in the manger. That's a very convenient dry location. Um, I did have a question. It looks like you're carrying two full spares and a spare off the rim. Is that from personal yes. experience that you need them all or what's the logic? Yeah, here? so the, the spare off the rim is for the truck. So that if I did get a flat on the truck and use my spare, then at the, I would have another tire that matched along. So I always carry two spares for the trailer and I've started carrying that extra tire, not on the rim for the truck. Uh, experience, yes. Uh, Linward, uh, she says, pull, uh, pull, I uh, can't talk, pull yep. noodles, pull noodles attached to the Gorilla Tape under the stud wall and tack if it is removable, keeps urine in the horse area. Good idea. And then friend- I do have, And I do use some pool noodles on the, I've got a tack that folds and it's got a gap where it folds and I've stuffed uh, pool noodles in that to keep the shavings from going into the tack area and to keep some of the dust off the tack. 
Uh, Fran, um, um, uh, Fran comments, uh, extra spare tire is a great idea. Idea uh, Recently had the same, same issue. It's a, half of uh, getting your trailer ready is planning for the worst and trying to be ready for as much as you can. Especially if you've got any kind of odd sized tires on anything, truck or trailer. Um, I have a tendency to go quite some distance at times. So having the two spares along, I hate that feeling of I've put my spare on and what if I have another flat before I can get another tire? So that's why I've gone to two. Okay, uh, a question that uh, catches me. Um, when was the last time you checked the tire pressure in your spare tire? When they put on new tires, uh, about three weeks ago. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> it's half the time my spare is flat. So that's a yes. And that is a, an important point. We need to remember to do that as, as our checklist. Yes. Um, what else? Uh, so any more questions from anyone? Awesome. Okay. So what I think we will we'll do is I'll get together with Johnny. It's, it looks like the video was cut a little short, and so we will make sure that uh, we have the full-length video, and we'll get that posted up on the website here shortly uh, with this question and answer session. Um, and then feel free to ask questions. Um, you can, you know, we can, when we post the link, we can do it on the Facebook group, and you can um, ask questions there. That'd be great. I don't think we have any more questions, Johnny. I want to thank you for doing this. Awesome. Thank you for taking time to help us. I want to thank everybody else for signing in to uh, listen uh, to our webinar. Um, this year, our webinars are a little bit scattered, uh, but we are um, trying to do them at least every month. Uh, we had one last question sneak in. Uh, what are the type of screws that you use to attach the Gladiator tracking? They're uh, called lath screws, lath screws. You'll find them where the drywall screws are and look for the ones that say metal. And they have a flat back that goes nice and flush to the tracks and a lower head so that if you're putting the hooks on, the head of the screw doesn't get in the way. I'll comment. It's, um, on our aluminum trailer, we've also used pop rivets. Yes. And there you just uh, you drill the exact size hole you, you need. And with a large pop rivet gun, you can pop things in place. And that works very effectively, too. And it gives you a little bit flatter surface and less for the horses or other things to scrape against. Yes. But they don't tend to be, aren't necessarily as strong. Again, it's for lighter weight things. All right, yes. Johnny. Thank you very much. Appreciated Thanks. your time. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. Have a good night.